peace, mercy, and blessings of God be upon you. Fish are among the most diverse living creatures that come in many different shapes, sizes, and species. But the main thing that differentiates between fish and some is the environment or the type of water in which they live. There are fish that live in salty water such as seas, oceans, salt lakes, etc. These fish are usually colorful, and their colors are very bright and beautiful. And you have the rest of the fish that live in fresh water, which is like rivers, lakes and ponds. These usually don't have bright colors and nothing. But far from the obvious differences in their shape. Do you think there are other differences between them or not? What are the characteristics of each type? And how each of them can live in their own environment? And most, importantly, do you wonder if we bring a freshwater fish and put it in the sea or vice versa, what will happen to this fish? Hello, I am Mohammed Saleh, but before we start, if you are still new to the channel, do not forget to like and activate the bell so that our videos reach you first. The first and most important difference between saltwater fish and freshwater fish is the method each species uses to force water into their bodies. Enter their body. Why is there water even inside the fish's body? Fish or marine organisms in general need water to enter their bodies all the time for more than one reason. The first reason is that fish breathe. Fish use their gills to extract oxygen from the water that enters their bodies. Then you use oxygen. However, the water itself creates a hydraulic balance between the fish's body and the surrounding environment. To keep the pressure on the body of the fish moderate. In addition, water dot also helps the fish to get rid of waste products from their metabolism or helps them to metabolize. Instead, the water in the fish's body literally makes it part of the water. Thus, she can easily track the chemical signals present in the water and easily access her food. As well as communicating with the fish around it. This means that the entry of water into the body of the fish is very important. So that they can survive. Well, what else is wrong with that? Can our brain tell us, can a fish open its mouth and water enter its body and that's it? The truth is, the issue is not that simple. Fish work hard to let water into their bodies. This is a natural property found in water called osmosis. I think this feature in a nutshell is that the water moves naturally, from the area with lower salt concentrations, to the area with higher salt concentrations. So that there is a balance, between the two. We ask here what does this mean? For example, if we have a glass containing two volumes of water, but they are separated by a semi-permeable membrane, one part of them contains a small percentage of salt, and the other part contains a lot of salt. In this case, the water will start moving towards the area with higher salt concentration to balance the two quantities. This phenomenon occurs naturally without any outside interference. This takes us directly to the conditions in which saltwater fish live, as the salinity in seawater is very high, reaching an average of 3.5%. This means that every liter of salt water contains about 35 grams of salt. Because of this, saltwater fish have to excrete a lot of salts within their bodies, and they also absorb salts pretty heavily from any source around them. Instead, it invades foods high in salt, such as shells, slugs, and snails. This is because the percentage of salts in their body remains higher than the percentage of salts in seawater. Hence, this would ease the flow of seawater into their bodies. As for freshwater fish, they don't need to excrete a lot of salts inside their bodies or anything like that. Because the percentage of salts in freshwater is very small. But sometimes it is almost non-existent. The average percentage of salts in river water ranges from 0.1% to 0.5%. At the latest, each liter of fresh water contains less than half a gram of salt. This makes fresh water flow into the fish's body easily, and now it still does. Facilitate. Now that we know what the difference is between saltwater fish and freshwater fish, and how do the two deal with the water around them. I wonder what could happen, if we bring a saltwater fish and put it in fresh water, let it be a river for example, or we bring a freshwater fish and put it in the sea, as for the fish that live in salt water, once you put it in fresh water, water would begin to flow into his body in huge quantities. This is because the concentration of salts in his body will be much higher than the concentration of salts in fresh water. Accordingly, the body of the fish will be filled with water, and the internal organs of the fish will swell and swell, so much so that the fish can literally explode. As for freshwater fish, when we take it and put it in salt water, the exact opposite happens. Water and fluids that are in the fish's body from the inside begin to escape from it and out into the sea. 
This is because, the concentration of salts in the water around the fish will be higher than the concentration of salts inside its body. This, in turn, will cause the fish's body to dry out and shrink. Good. Is there another difference between saltwater fish and freshwater fish? Oh, there are various other things. Chief among them is the behavior of each type of them. Saltwater fish, because their environment has high waves, and strong water jets. There is great competition for food. This makes their behavior violent. And they move in the water at great speeds. Their whole life is battles, pursuits and concerns. In addition, most saltwater fish have sharp and strong teeth. Some have teeth in the upper and lower jaw, and some have palatine teeth, which are located in the roof of the mouth and in the tongue. Some also have pharyngeal teeth, which are located at the beginning of the larynx. This is to suit the nature of their food, which contains a high percentage of proteins and fats. On the contrary, freshwater fish remain quite calm, and their movement is slow. Because the field of competition for food in its possession is not great. With this exception, the currents and waves in fresh water remain more stable and unturbulent. For this reason, we can say that saltwater fish are more wild than freshwater fish by a large margin and saltwater fish are much larger than freshwater fish. Almost the largest species of freshwater fish is the white sturgeon, or beluga sturgeon. Its length varies between 5 and 6 meters. It weighs about a full ton. While the whale shark, which is the largest species of saltwater fish, is 12 meters long and weighs about 20 tons. And you also have the blue whale, the largest animal on earth. Its length is about 30 meters, and its weight ranges from 130 tons to 150 tons. It also lives in salt water. Add to this sharks, dolphins, octopuses, squids, and many more. Thus, there is a significant difference in growth rates between saltwater fish and freshwater fish. Finally, one very strange phenomenon is that in some fish and sea creatures they are called urihelin. This is so you can live in salt water and fresh water at the same time. They easily adapt to either one of the two. And not only that, but they can also adapt to extreme temperature changes, acid and alkaline changes, pressure changes and current intensity changes. One of the most famous examples of this is salmon. Salmon live most of their lives in salt water, and they are very natural. But during breeding times, specifically in the spring and summer, they migrate from salty waters for very long distances, until they reach rivers that pour their waters into the oceans. There, he performs the process of reproduction, and the female lays eggs in fresh water. And when the baby salmon emerge from the eggs, they prefer a period in the backyard water, until they grow and grow a bit, and then return to the salty waters of the ocean. And when the summer and spring months come again, they return to the same circle of new cycle. They go to the waters of beginning in A, the river in which they were born, so that they may also reproduce and lay their eggs. Another exotic example of this is a type of shark called the bull shark or urine shark. The average length of this shark is about 3 meters, and its weight is about 250 kilograms. Although it lives in salt water, it travels to some distant rivers and lives there for years. It was spotted before in the Misaspi River, which is about 2,700 kilometers from the ocean. It has also been spotted in the Amazon River, which is about 4,000 kilometers from the ocean. In addition to sharks, salmon, and bull sharks, there are many sea creatures to admire it lives in salt water and fresh water at the same time. That's it, we're done. Who got here? Who arrived? You guys are the coolest. Also, hit like before you go out, so we know how many of you made it to the end of the video. And do not forget. If there is a question that crosses your mind day or night, write it to us in the comments below the video, so that we can answer it. Most of the videos we make now, we take from comments. Goodbye.